Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. I've been doing with you in the last one year plus, you have come to the next phase. Amen. And the Bible said the path of the just man is as a shiny light. It shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Glory to Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, he quoted some scriptures that got my attention. And it's the reason why I just want to share what I will share with you for 10 minutes. Quoted some very profound scriptures like 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. You know, John was speaking, and he said, As he is, so are we. Not in heaven. So are we in this world. You know, there are scriptures that are scary. In fact, when you read them, you want to wonder why they were included in the pages of scripture. Because when you compare them with the circumstances of men, the difference is too wide apart. And you are wondering, either this scripture is for a special few, or this scripture is just a poetic writing and should not be interpreted literally. Because you can't reconcile the provision of the scripture with the experiences of men, even that of yourself. I read another scripture in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. He said, according as his divine power. He said, he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue and you are wondering i've known jesus i've been in church for a while how come i don't have all things that pertain to life how come i still struggle with issues that border on godliness is this scripture real and then you go to the next verse and he said he has given us exceeding great and precious promises he said that by them, we might become partakers of his divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then you're asking yourself, have I truly escaped the corruption that is in the world? Because when you see sin all over the place, it looks like everybody is struggling with sin. You see sickness. You see the failure of humanity. And then you're asking yourself, have I really escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust? And then you also ask yourself, am I really a partaker of his divine nature? Is there anything divine about my life? Everything I can vet myself to have accomplished or to have manifested is natural. What I know today is a function of the physics and chemistry and philosophy and sociology that I've read in the university. The resources that are coming to my life are a product of the works that I do every day by laboring for salary. What, what are the divine things about my life? What are the supernatural things about my life? Yet Jesus speaking in John 10, 34 and 35, he said the scriptures cannot be broken. And before he made that statement, he said, ye are gods because you are the children of the Most High. So he didn't just say you are gods. He gave you the justification. He said you are the children of God. And because God can only give birth to God, it justifies that you are an offspring of God, so you are God. And you are seeing these scriptures, they are replete. And you can't reconcile them with your life. And so when you hear messages like this, you are inspired, you are blessed. But you are wondering, will these things ever be? And as I was listening to him, the Holy Ghost began to speak to my heart. He said, the problem with Christians is that they don't train themselves unto godliness. We don't exercise ourselves unto godliness. We see so many beautiful things about the, about the Lord and about the believer, but we never become these things even if we accept them. You know, there's a difference between accepting what the Bible says and becoming what the Bible says. 
There are many things in scriptures we have accepted. You believe it, you accept it, but you have not become it. You see the scriptures, they say you are the righteousness of God. You accept it with all your heart. You see the scripture tells you, if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives in you, it quickens your mortal body. The scripture tells you healing is the children's bread. You accept all of these truths, but you are asking yourself, why can't I become? Why does it look like my life is an opposite of everything the Bible keeps affirming? One of the challenges is that we don't train ourselves. In the natural, we train ourselves to become. You are what you are today by reason of many trainings that you have gone through. You are what you are today by reason of many exercises that you have subjected yourself to. But when it comes to the word of God, we either don't train ourselves or we don't even know how to train ourselves. And so when I come next week, I will take time to go deep into this matter. But to give you an idea of what I mean, I just want to show you three areas of training that you must begin to subject yourself to. If you will become everything the Bible says you are. Because the Bible tells us clearly that God cannot lie. And so everything he says is as he said it. And it's better you discover it here than discover it in eternity. Because everything you don't discover here, when you cross to the other side, you will discover it. It's a must. God will prove himself one way or the other. So there are three basic areas you need to begin to train yourself in order to become everything the Bible says you are. The first area is to train yourself to gain acquaintance with the presence of God. You must learn to bring yourself not just into awareness but into participation with God's realm and God's reality. This is one area that is deficient in our Christianity. In Proverbs 23 verse 29, the Bible said, To whom belongeth redness of eyes. That's a negative scripture, but it gives you an idea of what interaction does to a man. It says, They that tarry long in the wine. That means your eyes have the potential of becoming red, but that potential can be realized if you stay in the wine long enough. As you continue to ingest wine, a point will come when the impact will begin to reflect even in your natural body and your eyes will become red. So tarrying long in a place has the potential of making you to be acquainted and that acquaintance will affect even your morphology. That's what the scripture tells us. And that's why he quoted from Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 28. The Bible said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he weary? So he's talking to you about the prowess, the capacities of God. He said, he giveth power to the faint, unto them that has no might, he increases strength. So what God has, he doesn't want to keep for himself alone. He is liberal enough to want him to share. He said, but for those who will partake of that which God has, are they that wait upon the Lord. So you must train yourself to stay long enough in God's atmosphere until you gain acquaintance. You know, for those of you who watch football, the moment it is Saturday, as you wake up, even without knowing the match, there is a feeling, your body... Are you enjoying this content? Kindly subscribe now. The anatomy, the physiology of your body begins to respond to Saturday. So even if you don't know the calendar, when it is Saturday, there is a way your disposition is because you have acquainted too long with football that it has a resp your body gets a response to a particular day because it's a day of football. Those who watch all kinds of drama online, some of these movie dramas, from six o'clock, they watch one episode to seven, they watch another episode to, to eight, they watch another episode to, the moment evening is coming, their whole body is agitated. Anything they need to do, they quickly stop it. I have a sister, an elder sister that was addicted. The moment you come home, when it's evening, you start hearing Hindu. They're speaking in India because she's watching one series. And they, they, you cheat Hindu. A point came, we started knowing some language. Even we who were not watching. <laughs> so when you hear Namaste, you know they are greeting somebody. It was, we knew it. 
it's not like we went to read Indian language, but the activity was so consistent that you could begin to infer things. When you hear peer, you know they're talking love because the peer was much. Every time you are here, it's acquaintance. They, it, she brought the atmosphere to our realm until the thing began to impart on us. So even if you are going upstairs, sometimes even you hear yourself say namaste. <laughs> The thing has bombarded you to a long, so it became normal. A point even came in the house when people greet, they do like this. But they didn't even know when the hands gathered together. The thing had dominated. It's called acquaintance. The Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord, something happens to them. He said, they mount up with wings. Where does the wing come from? You never, you didn't know when the metamorphosis took place. You didn't know you had wind. Those potentials were there. You know, before God told you that you are like him, he installed something in you. He was not, he's not just speaking by his sovereignty. He's also speaking by the activity of the Holy Ghost. And what the Holy Ghost did, like he mentioned, was that certain things were installed on your inside. Eternal life was installed. The nature of God was installed. But it is your participation in his realm that will energize it. So when God is talking, he's talking because of what he has installed. So he expects you through the Holy Ghost to participate until those things are animated. So the realization of what God says is a function of the animation of the things that are on your inside. This is why you are called a witness. You are to confirm and to prove that what God said is true. But you see, you have a journey as a witness to embark upon. And that journey begins with participation in God's realm. And so the first thing about participation is to stay until you gain acquaintance. When you stay long enough, even humans, when you stay long enough with people, you can perceive the aura from them. You can perceive their body, you know, aroma. The moment they are around, you know. If you pick any shirt that they wore, you will know who wore it. You can tell when they speak, you can discern their voice from among a million people. The reason is because you've been around. And most times, it's not just the ability to discern. When they speak, there is an emotional trigger that comes out of you. When you are around people who are kind to you, anytime you remember their name, you smile. You don't even know where the smile comes from. That smile is an effulgence. It's a response of who they are as you have perceived them. This is what must happen to every believer. But you see, participation is a warfare. Because when you want to stay, you will now discover that many things we want you to be an alien of that civilization. Distractions begin to come. Even your body at first will rebel to that atmosphere because you are not used to that environment. If you enter the water now, you are not a fish. After a few seconds, you start struggling to come out. You know why? Your system is not used to that environment. But if you begin to dive, begin to dive, after a while, you'll discover that your capacity to stay will begin to increase. They say those who are Navy SEALs, they can stay under the water for about a minute plus because they have trained for a long time. So they are now used to the environment. If you begin to stay, you will discover that the rebellion in you will break. But that is one thing that you must teach yourself if you will ever become what the Bible says you are. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9.27, he said, I beat my body. I bring it under subjection. Because when I go to worship, my body wants to watch a movie. When I go to pray, my body wants to sleep. When I want to fast, my body wants to eat. But I understand that for me to become what God said, I must condition this body to stay in that presence because I must be taught by the presence. Because the presence itself has a language. And that language, although inaudible, but its impact cannot be denied. When you stay in God's presence, a point comes like radiation. The presence of God begins to alter even your molecular structure. And a point will come when you can discern God's voice. You can perceive God's presence. And you will see that certain dimensions in you that were dormant will begin to be activated. Those are the things the Bible calls your wings in the spirit. The things that make you ascend from your realm into God's realm. So you begin to function not by the energy of the flesh, but by, by the abilities of the spirit. That's why I said they that wait upon the Lord, they mount up with wings like the eagles. When they run, they are no longer weary. When they walk, they no longer faint. Meanwhile, he told us already that even the youth shall faint. 
the young men shall utterly fall. So you are functioning by an energy that is now divine. But for you to get to that level, you must have stayed for a while. And so the ability, the first training that a Christian must build is the ability to compel himself to stay in God's atmosphere. If you don't train yourself to stay in God's realm, you will discover that you will be frustrated even when you read the Bible. Because you will be seeing what the Bible says that you cannot confirm in your own lifestyle. You cannot confirm in your own experience. This is where the first warfare of victory and transition begins from. The capacity to beat yourself to stay. See, when you get there and distraction comes, stay there until the distraction dies down. If you feel like sleeping, sleep and wake up. The Bible says, why men slept, the enemy sold. So if the devil walks, why men slept? God will walk even much more. There's no, nothing wrong in sleeping in God's presence. When you are done sleeping, stand up, continue. Because you are trying to cultivate something. If you don't, if you don't know this, hmm, you will run in and run out. And your life will remain the same. They are you enjoying this content? Kindly subscribe now will impact you it won't change your story you will quote scriptures it won't change anything because you have not been cultured to function in the civilization that god brings to you and so the first type of training that everybody must develop is the training of staying the way god taught me because when i started staying stretch was a bit difficult so god taught me to break it into hours and so i will stay for 30 minutes and do what I want to do for two hours, come back, stay 30 minutes. In a day I discovered I've been able to stay for three hours. And as I mastered it, after a while, God increased the duration. I will stay for one hour in three hours. One hour in three hours. And God kept building. A point now came, I can lock my door and stay there for three days. And I don't even know it's three days. As I came to London now, this is the first time I'm coming out of the room since yesterday. I don't need to go anywhere. There is stamina in God's presence. I have trained myself. So even if the noise is going on outside, I'm more fused to what is happening inside than what is happening outside. I will go out when I have business. I don't go to wander around. There's nothing out there that satisfies more than what is inside here. I'm telling you, the visible world was crystallized from the invisible world. If you think there's beauty in the world, search God's presence. He said, what eyes have not seen? What ears have not heard? They dwell in that realm. And as you begin to stay, after a while, your senses will be activated. God will begin to show you things. God will begin to whisper things to your spirit. And even dimensions in you will begin to wake up. And you will now discover that the Bible is not a lie. The first training that you must give to yourself. Listen, this is different from Bible school. This is your own journey with God. You must beat yourself. Master the presence. It could be prayer. It could be meditation. It could be worship. It could be fasting. I don't want to... Re Whichever God begins with you, just make sure you are able to subdue your flesh. Let the rebellion of your flesh die. The Bible said the flesh wars against the spirit. And they said the spirit against the flesh. And they said the two are one against the other. But you must make sure that your spirit win the battle. And the place you win the battle is not when crisis come. It's in the presence. That's where the battle begins from. I'm telling you, when you get home now, try to pray for 30 minutes. You will see the ancient battle that exists between spirit and flesh. We wake up immediately. The arena for that warfare is in the presence. It doesn't happen anywhere else. But for you to become what God says you are, you must fight that battle there and make sure the spirit has supremacy. This is the first training that every spiritual man must undergo. The ability to win the battle over the flesh in the presence of God. And that's the only way, the only place flesh can be mortified. He said, and Samuel hewn Agag to pieces in the presence of God. Agag is a type of the world system. It's a type of the flesh. It was in the presence that Samuel tore him apart. That is how you decimate flesh. And that is how you become a spiritual man. I'm telling you, the dimension most of you carry, if they wake up, you'll be afraid of yourself. Most of the things we try to force, they are not supposed to be forced. They are supposed to be gushers. They flow out of us. They flow. Healing should flow out of you. Wisdom should flow out of you. Favor should flow out of you. But they are locked. Those chambers have not opened up because you have not mastered how to give the spirit man supremacy. The first way and the first training of a spiritual man 
is the ability to tame the flesh and insist that the civilization of the spirit will not be alien to you. You will be there. When you are there for a while, if you walk past the market, if God's presence is in any location, you can discern it. People are not singing, they are not playing keyboard. But if you pass, you will know that something happened here. If an angel is standing in a place, if you come there, you will know that an entity from another dimension is here. You know, those days I will be in church, the pastor will be preaching and say, Ah, they, an angel is here. I'll say, Ah, angel, <laughs> when did he come here? <laughs> oh, God, take it easy. <laughs> How did angel come here so quick? And supernatural things will begin to happen. And then I'll be sure. Could it be that what this man said is true? And I will just live in that confusion. You can't discern it because you are using emotion, you are using suspicion. Those things can't work in that realm. You have other senses that are dormant. If you train yourself long enough, you wake up. When I came into the UK, let me even give you what happened today. I went, I came into the room, my friend came and he said, Ah, this is the right temperature, room temperature. I said, What do you mean, room temperature? I'm wearing three garments. You say, This is the right temperature. Looked at him. I said, You came here barely a year ago. What's going on? Some months ago, you and I were wearing cardigan. You know what happened? He's even the brain, the brain is now sending signals that this guy is in a new territory. So the physiological processes have been altered. Now, for him, seven degree is normal, but not for me. Because I, I've not been here long enough. But if I stay here for five months, You'll be shocked. You'll see me with polo. And I'll be strolling. Uh, how are you doing? You, you, what happened? I, I stayed. As I stayed, things began to happen. That's what happens to you in God's presence. When you stay long enough, you will know that you too can see angelic beings. You will know that when the Holy Ghost speaks, you too can tell. You can discern when the power of God is flowing. And you can channel it. It's called the training of a spiritual man. This is what makes us become mighty representing God anywhere we find ourselves. Begin to train yourself with the presence of God. The easiest way to start is worship. I'm giving you a formula now. You know why? Worship is you taking advantage of the strength that others have gathered. You know, when somebody worships, he's worshiping from a realm. When you come into that space of that sound, what has happened is that that person has deployed his own strength to you as an advantage. It's like somebody giving you a ladder to climb a building. Or somebody is up and is trying to pull you up. It's not your labor. He is the one bringing you to that realm. That's what worship does. The guy fasted. The guy prayed. And he caught a song in the spirit. And he sang that song. And that song became a ladder. So you now, so, some of you, you even finished quarreling with your husband. And then, as you were going to the bathroom to shower, you now start hearing, I need thee every hour. And you start crying. You start saying, God, I love you. Your space was, you, you were hijacked. You are, your world is currently contention. But they brought another atmosphere into your space and hijacked you. You didn't know when you transitioned from animosity and anger into brokenness and weeping. That's because you are tapping from somebody else's energy. That's the easiest way to begin the journey of training yourself. So spend time, worship, worship. If you open my phone now, you are going to see different playlists. There are those that are called hymns. They are high praise. There, is, there are some I call floating realm. There are others I call transitions. It depends on the, I, I select the music that have those dimensions and I align them. So I move from one to the other. I move from one. So there are times when I'm just on my earpiece and my eyes are closed. I'm floating with people who have opened the gangway in the spirit and they are carrying me. They are carrying me. They are carrying me. And the point comes, I begin to hear God. Are you enjoying this content? Kindly subscribe now. And I can do that for three hours before I start praying. That's the easiest way to transition. You are using somebody else's energy. You are riding on somebody else's anointing. You are entering a door that somebody has opened. But you can't remain there because you may not be very strong. The reason is because when you come to a place where you don't have those access points, you can't join it. So when you start that and the realm begins to draw you, there are certain impartations you will receive. 
on the strength of that impartation move to the next level begin to pray in tongues when you pray in tongues you think you have prayed you now check it's 10 minutes it shows how rusty you are it's like a fat man going to run when he's breathing breathing and you come you may think ah this guy have gone 10,000 no he ran to 20 meters <laughs> the flesh is much no, he's breathing <sighs> you say ah have you been running on a marathon the marathon for him is 20 meters if he runs 100 meters he will faint but you see if he continues he will do 100 meters for two weeks after a while when he runs 100 meters he won't be tired again you know why cholesterol has been burnt off the volume of oxygen supply have increased is at 400 he will now pant like that after a while it's after 2000 meters he will pant like that a point will come if he's consistent you will see him going for cross country and then you are wondering when did you become like this they said the elders told us inconsistency lies the power so when you do worship where you are aided enter tongues too you too pray your way into that realm pray your way there as you are tonguing and tonguing and tonguing when you are tired add some music receive support and then continue tonguing a point will come you discover your bandwidth in that realm will increase so your tiring capacity will grow now your focus is not time your focus is, focus is transition but time is something you can't do without because you are a creature of time joining into eternity so every time you come back there'll be a reference but your idea is where you are going to not where you are coming from that's why you won't benchmark with time make sure transitions are happening and as you are doing it longer and longer and longer you will see that you are becoming more and more like him and then add fasting because fasting will help you sustain the atmosphere even when you go out from the place of prayer because the propensities you have in the flesh they are strong when you are in order if you eat well you, you, you want to have fresh air if you eat well you want to visit a friend sometimes the reason we fast that's why the old testament calls it humbling yourself in fasting those many ideas you have you want to watch football you want to go and visit a friend when you are hungry there won't be much <laughs> so what you are doing is that you are limiting the capacity of flesh so that you can stay in the spirit you are limiting the capacity have you seen hungry people running around no when people are hungry they are sober they want to think so what fasting will do is that the atmosphere you have built in order not to dissipate it fasting will help you to be big 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 you'll be organized <laughs> you'll be circumspect in your dealing so put fasting in your weekly manual or menu begin with one one day fast in a week then make it two then make it three so that periodically you are exercised unto godliness and then meditate on scriptures carry verses of scripture be talking it to yourself be talking it to yourself the hindus know this better you need to enter some monks people chant for 16 hours because they know the power of these things when you talk certain things to yourself a point come those things alter your your frequency your soulish frequency they can alter you this is what falling beings know but in light we have not understood those things when you are talking the word of god to yourself you will enter the frequency of the rema word that's why i say this book of the law joshua 1 8 should not depart out of thy mouth he said meditate upon it day and night he says see that you observe to do what is written therein he said you will make your way prosperous and have good success so master those things these four things they are the trainings of the presence they are the trainings when you do that then come to the second level is the faith training is the faith training i'm teaching you things that can change your life forever train yourself about god's presence until your propensities are awoken then train yourself in faith you know the way god's presence works is if you train yourself to to a level hmm? you will notice that the speed with which you transition will be very fast 
So, number one, you can tell if what somebody is doing is spiritual flesh. Somebody is singing, you just know this is not God. And the song may be very slow and emotional. But you're, you are discerning from another level. And if you come and what somebody is doing is spiritual, immediately things will be on it. You can see a vision. You are broken. So broken that you are weeping. You know this is beyond emotion. The anointing begins to move. You just know because you are active. Then train faith. How do you train faith? You train faith through number one, revelation. See, any area of your life hmm, that you know is of significance, go and look for what the Bible says about it. And master it until you think that way. Any area of your life that you know is consequential. I'm teaching you how to train your faith. You know, we all have faith. The problem of the New Testament Christian is not faith, it's understanding. Lack of understanding. Romans 12 verse 3, the Bible said, God dealt to every one of us the measure, day. That means the faith you require for a successful life was given to you. And everyone who received Christ, the measure of faith. And Jesus said, if you have faith as tiny as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So the problem you have is not faith. We all have the measure of faith. And to even stir your heart much more, the measure is the measure of faith that Christ had. Paul was speaking in Galatians 2.20. He said, I have the faith of the Son of God. And Peter was speaking in 2 Peter 1 verse 1. He said, we all have like precious faith. So the faith Peter had is the faith Paul had and is the faith of the Son of God. And that's the faith you and I have. And Paul was speaking in 2 Corinthians 4.13. He said, according as it is written, they believe and have spoken. We have been the same spirit of faith. So your problem is not faith. The problem is that your faith is not trained and it's not exercised. But the first way to train your faith is to give your faith understanding. And the way you give your faith understanding is through revelation. So you go to the Bible and find out what do you do when you are sick? And you look at what the word of God says and you begin to tell it to your faith. So you can begin by saying, by Are you enjoying this content? Kindly subscribe now. By his stripes, you are healed. Your faith is learning it. See, it's like the way AI works. When these AIs are designed, they have very dangerous capacities. But they train them. They give them instruction, they practice it. The way the AI trains is that if you design an AI, let's say a basketballing AI, and you want it to net the basket. You put it in different locations and give it the basketball. It will throw it. Anytime it nets, it will record that program. Anytime it misses, it will record it. That pathway that missed, it will never repeat it again. That's what, the, that's what increases the precision of an AI. The one that it misses, that path will be blocked forever. So anytime that AI is in this location, it will only use the pathway that netted. It will never use the paths that missed. So if the AI is standing there, 10 out of 10, it will net. So the way you train the AI is that you make sure every part of the field, the AI must throw the ball until it nets. So anywhere that AI is now standing, only the paths that net will be active. All the paths that fail will never be active. If you don't take that AI around the whole field, it will still be missing until it goes everywhere and it's acquainted with everywhere. So it will delete the parts that missed and save the parts that scored. And so the AI will become 100% effective. That's how they train AI machines. The same thing applies to your faith. If you don't teach your faith what the Bible said, your faith will not be active. So the first thing you need to do is to show, is to educate it. He said, by his stripes, we were healed. So our predominant confidence is not drugs. Our predominant confidence is the stripe of Jesus. And your faith will probe further. Why is it so? That's why you see your spirit will be troubling to get justification. And then you educate it further. The reason you were susceptible to sickness in the first place is because you were guilty of sin. 
and so sin exposed you to sickness and you could not fight sin because sin you could not fight sickness because sin denatured you so the elements of god on your inside that you wore against sickness are no longer there because sin denatured you but now that christ took away the judgment of your sin a new nature was installed in you that nature has the capacity to resist sickness when your faith understands it anytime sickness is coming even before you know your faith will rise up you will now discover that the rate at which you fall sick will start reducing you who used to fall sick every week you discover that it will become two weeks after a while three weeks after a while two months and you're wondering what's going on your faith is already raising a defense even without your knowing because every revelation that went in energized your faith so the first way to train the second way to train yourself is to train your faith and you train your faith by educating it with the revelation of the world the same applies to your finances it applies to everything about you even the anointing that we operate in here we have to teach our faith that this thing is in us and this is how it is activated and so anytime you want to operate in it so long as that pathway is open in your spirit you see that the action begins to take place so you have faith but you must train your faith that's why paul said according as it is written they believe and have spoken so we discover the pathway of activating faith is by talking he said we too we believe therefore we speak we have known that this is the channel so we talk to see action but before we talk we believe it they believe that's why they spoke those are corridors of revelation so if i believe the next thing to do is to speak and as i train myself that if i speak i will have the results they have after a while my faith will conquer it and when i do it i will see answers you need to educate your faith most of us have dormant faith that are not educated and so in the middle of crisis we want to believe but we don't know how and then finally you must master to take action if you don't take action you will never become what the bible says you are in james chapter 2 verse 19 he said thou believest that there's only one god he said thou doest well he said the devil also believes and trembles he said but oh ye vain man he said don't you know that faith without works is dead that means you may have faith but it may be likened to a dead faith if he has no action in verse 26 he said as the spirit without the body as the body without the spirit is dead he says so also faith without works is dead so he's telling you that action is a must for you you say you are favored but you have not attempted anything to see the power of favor and you have not put demand on favor how will that favor speak you say you are anointed you have not prayed for any sick person how will you know if that anointing is there you say you are the light of the world you have not gone out to win souls how will you know you are the light and so there are dimensions sitting in you but they are not deployed if you want to train yourself you must train yourself with action i started praying for the sick no one was healed it took a long time before i started seeing the sick get healed and the more i prayed the more healing increased the more i prayed the more healing increased if you want to become what god says you are you must train yourself to dwell in his presence until you become used to his presence and until your propensities are activated if you want to become what god says you are you must educate your faith through definite revelations and if you want to become what god says you are you must master the art of taking actions corresponding actions to faith this is how we become in this kingdom otherwise you will come to church hear messages go back and never become a point will come when crisis hit you you become angry with pastors and say these people lied they psyched us when there was crisis we didn't see any of the results they spoke about in fact those things are not true and you'll be justified in your anger to yourself because all you know is what you think there is but there's a way of the spirit this is how we become in this kingdom are you ready to pray some of you as somebody 
as somebody stood up and walk, you must turn. That's how you train yourself. So you can't even stop, even in God's presence. <laughs> That's the same way you need to train yourself in spiritual things. When you train yourself, you can't help it. It will flow out of you. Have you been blessed tonight? Yes, sir. Are you enjoying this content? Kindly subscribe now. Lift your right hand where you are sitting. What do you want God to do for you? Ask for it now. You know, some of you have not even trained yourself to believe that God blesses people. You know why? Because everything you ever needed, you work for it. So the only thing you understand as a channel of getting what you want is by work. So when they say, you don't. That's why some of us were in Africa, it became a blessing at some point. Because many things we needed, we couldn't afford. So we started teaching ourselves from school fees. Lord, provide these school fees. Have mercy, have mercy. So before we left school, we already know that God can bless people. So now that we are growing in life, everything we want, we say, Abba, Father. <laughs> Some of you, we need to teach yourself that, yes, God answers prayers when people pray. I don't have insurance where I'm coming from. If your car is bashed, you have lost it. That is if you come out with your life. So I need to trust God that there will be no accident for 10 years. So I'm driving with a consciousness that I won't, I can't have accident. Because I'm not ready to lose the car all my life. There's no insurance anywhere. So I've been driving without accident by faith. <laughs> There's no insurance company that will show up. If I bash somebody's car, we pay for it and lose mine. So in addition to being careful, I'm driving by faith. That's how you train yourself. If I tell you now that God will heal somebody, how do you think I'm sure? I've done it too many times. And I've seen God respond too many times. So my faith can easily respond when I say so. If I tell you, if you leave this meeting, I'll be back next week Sunday. If you are not blessed in seven days, come and tell me I'm fake. What will give me that audacity? It's not because I'm a preacher. It's because I've said it several times and people have been blessed. So when I say it, my faith can ride on it. But you don't have to be a preacher. Train yourself. Lord, as I'm going out today, show me that you favor men. And you are walking the whole day with a consciousness that there is something you can't do for yourself that favor we do. And when you return, you recount your day and find out how many supernatural things happen. That's how you train yourself. As I'm going out today, if I see anybody sick, I will pray for him. Lord, if you heal the sick, heal men through me. And you are beginning to do it. After a while, you discover that the anointing will start flowing. Train yourself. Train yourself. A point will come when even if you don't want to, you can't change it. It has become your status quo. That's why I say train up a child in the way that he should go. He said when he's grown up, that he can make a lot of other decisions by himself. He said he can't do it anymore. You have no choice but to follow the path that you showed him. Father, we ask for a shift. That is a shift indeed. For every hand lifted up here tonight, Lord, I ask that in the next seven days, give them a definite visitation. They have come before you with situations that they cannot handle, but they have looked upon you as their source. Abba Father, because they have relied on you, I join my faith with theirs. And Lord, I decree every petition that they have lifted before you tonight, even before we gather here again on Sunday, let there be a definite answer. In the name of Jesus. And for every one of them that will dare trust that you will change their circumstances. Lord, I ask by the anointing of the Spirit 
let there be a radical turnaround for them in the next seven days. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.